Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're starting the chapter on centroids and center of gravity. So that of course begs the question, what is the center of gravity? Here we have an object and to make things a little bit simpler, let's have an object that only extends out in the x and y direction. The z direction, let's say that it's fairly flat. But this object has a certain amount of mass and therefore since it's attracted to the center of the earth, it also has some weight. The center of gravity is the point where all the weight of this entire object appears to be acting. In other words, if you had a plate like this and you can balance it on your finger, where you can balance it on your finger, that is called the center of gravity. It, it seems as if all the weight of the object is acting on that one single point. Another way to look at it is, let's say you take an object right here and you try to find the center of gravity of the object. There it is. I'm supporting it on my finger here. Now, if I were to throw this object in the air and it's tumbling uh, like this, the center of gravity would create a very nice parabolic path while the rest of the object is simply tumbling through the air. So the center of gravity is really the point as if all the mass and all the weight of the object is centered about that single point. What do we do with the center of gravity? Well, for sometimes also, I want to pay, uh, bring your attention to that, the center of gravity doesn't always have to be on the object. For example, if you have an object like this, you can't really at any point put on your finger and balance it because it will fall off because the center of gravity actually isn't on the object itself and that is very possible as well. For most objects, of course, that's not the case, but something in this kind of shape, that can happen. The center of gravity here has what we call an x and a y coordinate. And notice we put a little line on top. That doesn't mean the average x and y. It simply means the center of gravity of this object. And these are the coordinates x and y of that particular point called the center of gravity. So that would be the distance away from the origin in the x direction, the distance away from the origin in the y direction, because these are usually associated relative to the origin of the x, y, and z coordinate system. How do you find the x coordinate and the y coordinate on the center of gravity? Well, the way we can do that, and let's come over here, to find, of course, the, in, in this case, what we call the x coordinate of the center of gravity, we multiply that times the weight. And we can say that this times this is equal to, now let's take a look and see what's on the right side of the equation. What we've done here is we've taken our object here and, and divided into a, a, a great number of thin little slices. And you can see that these little dots here represent the center of gravity of each of these little slices. And each of those has an X and a Y coordinate for the center of gravity of that particular uh, piece of the whole object. And so when I put a little squiggly line on top, that is my way of saying that this is the X coordinate of the center of gravity of that first object and this is the X coordinate of the center of gravity of the second piece of the object and so forth all the way until the very end. And we can of course do that for the Y coordinate as well. Notice that if I take the weight of this first object and multiply it times the coordinate, the X coordinate of the center of gravity, add that to the weight of the second piece and multiply that times the X coordinate of the center of gravity. I keep doing that for all the little pieces and add them all together. That is equal to the X coordinate of the whole object times its weight. That actually gives me the position of the center of gravity in the X direction. Now notice that if we make these things thinner and thinner and thinner and we increase the number of these slices in the limit as the slices become infinite when the the width of the slice becomes zero, that of course then turns into an integration. So we can say that if we then take the product of the x coordinate of the center of gravity of the whole object times the weight of the whole object, that is equal to the sum, the integral, of the x coordinate of each little piece times the small little slices as dw of course goes to uh, to the limit to zero, as we take infinitely small little slices, add them all up, that will then equal to this. And that's how we find the x coordinate because the next thing we would do then is we divide both sides by the weight of the object. So then the x coordinate is equal to the integral of the center of gravity, x coordinate of the center of gravity of each little piece times the weight of each little piece and take the whole thing and divide it by the weight of the whole object. And that's then how you find the x coordinate. And of course, we do the exact same thing for the y coordinate. I haven't shown you any examples yet of how to do that. There's plenty of examples coming up in the videos to come, but at least this gives you a quick little overview of what we mean by the center of gravity.